the Bloom filter. Imagine needing to check if a username's taken from a list of, say, a billion others. And here's the catch. You can't just store all billion items in memory. It's just too much. So what if we could sacrifice a little bit of accuracy for a huge boost in efficiency? At its heart, a Bloom filter is a probabilistic data structure. It only gives two answers. Definitely not, or probably yes. And it works using just two simple things. Okay, first, to add an item, you run it through a bunch of different hash functions. Those functions point to specific bits in an array, and you just flip them from zero to one. Now to check for an item, you run it through those exact same hash functions again. If any of the bits it points to are still a zero, then the answer is simple, definitely not. But if all the corresponding bits are already one, the answer is probably yes. So you're probably asking, why only probably? This is the trade-off. It's called a false positive. Other items might have flipped those same bits. So what does this trade-off get us in return? Well, look at this number, 1.2 megabytes. That's all you need to track a million items with just a 1% false positive rate. So where are people actually using this clever idea? Well, they're pretty much everywhere. Your web browser, for example. It uses them to quickly check for millions of malicious websites. Big databases use them to avoid slow disk searches for data that isn't even there. And even in crypto, they help clients find transactions without downloading the entire blockchain. Now, there is one key limitation. You can't really delete items from a standard Bloom filter. What this proves is that absolute precision isn't always necessary. Good enough can be way better. Elegance isn't always about perfection. Sometimes it's about knowing which trade-offs are worth making.